so uh, what I was going to do today is, is to uh, walk you through in, in an uh, uh, T uh, well Lumi in, in general so uh, so starting with then the story how we got here uh, what is the EuroHPC in general and and uh, uh, what is Lumi in relation to the EuroHPC effort uh, I then spend uh, some time in, in walking through and introdu introducing you what's coming up as, as the Lumi uh, architecture uh, and, and also discussing the, what should it and could it mean for as, as a benefit for research development and, and in, innovation. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, finally uh, some words for people who are really going to use it as, as an uh, end users so how to get uh, prepared for the for the system and I hope to reserve time for, for questions and uh, but uh, there will be also an uh, opportunity for, for uh, asking questions after the uh, all, all presentations um, <clears throat> the euro SPC uh, is, is the the, uh, the story goes back to a few years perhaps uh, in, in 2017 2018 time frame when the European Commission kind of like a, uh, woke up to the fact that US and, and China and, and Japan are a way ahead of, of the European Union what comes to the uh, high performance computing infrastructure in Europe and uh, so far of course we have had the collaborative projects for, for many years in Europe uh, but this was the kind of a top, uh, top down effort for building a pan-European uh, infrastructure for high performance computing and artificial intelligence and uh, so the it was uh, formed this euro HPC joint undertaking uh, which is an commission led effort for pooling uh, like a member country and European Union resources for uh, providing a world class supercomputing and data infrastructure for the good of, of, of European uh, scientific and, and in the uh, private sector research so it's, it's, it's um, partly it's an infrastructure project. So we, it will own and, and deploy an, an infrastructure and keep it uh, competitive. But at the same time, it is funding an re uh, ambitious research and innovation agenda for uh, developing skills and, and uh, capabilities in Europe. And the Euro SPC is, is uh, effort of 32 European countries, so EU countries and associated countries. And uh, uh, the train has progressing pretty nicely so far. So uh, it's already in, in back in, in June 2019, Euro SPC was able to announce the first generation of these Euro SPC supercomputers. And as mentioned, three of these, something they call precursors to exascale uh, systems to Finland, Italy, and Spain, and then five uh, smaller but not small uh, systems uh, elsewhere in Europe. And all of these systems are available for all researchers in Europe, uh, European countries. And the next steps in the, in the Euro HPC infrastructure are the next generations of systems. Uh, so there's a plan for, for the next gen systems and even next next gen systems of Europe. But of course, today we're going to focus on the uh, one of these, which is the Finnish system, or the or not Finnish system, but system in Finland. Uh, and. Uh, uh, like I said, not not the Finnish system because it's an it's an uh, joint effort of of um, ten countries in Europe. So Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Estonia, Iceland from from the Nordics, uh, ten Poland, uh, Czech Republic, Sp Switzerland, and Belgium. And uh, of this, uh, everybody are funding the effort for a substantial amount of money. Uh, they are not the same. But, uh, uh, but still everybody are contributing a lot and uh, uh, also Belgium has been a core partner from the very beginning so Belgium is, is the second largest investment after Finland into this system and uh, the idea is that uh, we pull together uh, our know-how our resources to uh, install a system that none of these countries would uh, be able to install uh, and operate on their own uh, and uh, there's, there's a reason why it, uh, why it, uh, why did we chose to place in Kayane that will come back in a moment. But uh, it's just like a, needs to be understood that this, uh, they, some other sites could have been possible. This is just like a uh, collaborative effort for, for building, uh, 
building and, and operating the system together. And uh, the idea is that uh, the resources generated by Lumi will be allocated per these investments. And uh, so the Commission of the Euro SPC Joint Undertaking is, is funding uh, one half of this uh, 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 of this uh, system, and thereby they are able to uh, allocate one half of the resources or cycles of this system. And this is something uh, it's either praise or very similar to praise projects. So it's a peer review. Uh, their zero access, how the commission uh, shares will be funded. And everybody in Europe uh, can apply uh, via, via this channel. And um, the rest, the other half is, is uh, by the, for, for the partner countries to allocate uh, uh, basically as they, as they see fit. So uh, roughly uh, Finland is, is having uh, one half of this one half so 25 percent in, in general in total and uh, belgium is having roughly eight uh, percent of this of the cycles to be uh, allocated by local considerations and policies and uh, this uh, the details of this uh, belgian considerations will be will be uh, addressed in the in the last talk, talk of this kickoff event uh, and uh, so it's, it's in, in it will be in Kajaani in northern finland uh, but I, like, like I said, so it's an, uh, not a Finnish system, but uh, all decisions are done uh, by this consortium level, starting also from the uh, from very very beginning. So, so we we've been a uh, division was formed together of the of the system. The uh, and uh, later on, when we get got the hosting, the uh, system RFPs have been a collaborative effort, and also the what comes to the operations, we will uh, do this in, in a, as a consortium and uh, via, via the consortium management. And the, basically the reason why we did put this, this in, in Kajani was basically the facility. So it's no, not visible here, it was supposed to be an animation, but uh, the system is, is in an, uh, will be, uh, the data center will be within a former uh, paper mill. Um, uh, that, well, paper machine gun, uh, long time ago, the production went to Latin America, but uh, the facility remains. And uh, we've been running our national systems on this, this site for uh, for eight years now. And Lumi will be uh, also within this area. And it's benefited for uh, by by an availability, abundant uh, availability of, of green energy. So we will run Lumi with a 100% uh, carbon neutral uh, renewable power. Uh, generated by local uh, hydro electric uh, <coughs> uh, facilities. Uh, the system is, is an, uh, very connected. It used to consume several percent of the Finnish, uh, the total energy consumption in Finland back in, back in the days. Uh, so this, uh, and uh, the paper machines couldn't go down. So basically the site has been, uh, is fed by national grid for, for many directions. And basically that's uh, in my lifetime, there has been one one two minute outage on the on the site. Uh, well, it's uh, there up north, so we can do free cooling around the year. Basically, just letting out the uh, heat, which uh, allows us to run it very, with a very low power usage efficiency. But this time, in fact, we are not letting the uh, heat to the uh, outside air, but we uh, collect it, it and and use it uh, for heating up the surrounding city of Kajaani. And in fact, uh, it's a medium-sized city of, of uh, 40,000 people or something like this. And 20% uh, and, uh, uh, of the houses in the Kajani city center will be, or the Kajani city will be heated up by, by the supercomputer. So I this uh, is our waste, but it's somebody's treasure. And that is uh, basically allows us to, and we will even get money for that. So it really uh, makes the operations very, very uh, cost efficient. So the effective energy price, uh, goes to a very competitive level and uh, and also we can think of the uh, footprint to be uh, carbon footprint to be um, uh, let's see if I have a um, I hope you can see the screen and there's also some some hiccup going on but uh, so the footprint to be negative in a, in a, in a speaking because the uh, local 
uh, local energy company can can reduce uh, consumption of, of fossil fuels uh, with this this green uh, waste heat. So we can think of, of it's it re, uh, it's an uh, total CO2 uh, footprint. This is something that corresponds to modern cars. Uh, uh, like a substantial amount of, of CO emissions are being uh, neglected by, by this. This may be remote, but it's very well connected. So it's, it's a part of the uh, Nordic internet backbone. So we can uh, reach uh, 400 gigabits to uh, to the uh, giant. Uh, and uh, of course, it's a, also it's, it's a very reliable, uh, robust industrial site. So we can we can run the highest security levels uh, if, if needs be. Okay, um, let me move on to the, uh, so cool, but uh, so what, what is in there, there, there for you? So let, let me walk through the benefits and opportunities for, uh, um, for research and innovation. Well, the system itself, so it, it was uh, announced some time ago, uh, in, in late October, that the uh, system will be um, uh, provided by Hewlett Packard Enterprise uh, with the brand name of, of uh, Cray, that was uh, quite recently uh, well, like a iconic supercomputer uh, manufacturer that was purchased uh, uh, by by HP, so a bit before the uh, deal. And the uh, system itself, uh, well, this is a bit. Uh, bad picture because the front end won't be the same, and uh, even the cabinet count is not entirely correct. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it's an, uh, uh, going to be a very impressive system of, of uh, peak performance, towering uh, over 550 petaflops, uh, which will make the system one of the fastest in the, in the world. So uh, if you compare compared to uh, to the uh, Fukago supercomputer. Which is the current number one? Uh, we, this is uh, it uh, outperforms that, and uh, then uh, if you compare it to the second fastest, which is the summit in the in the United States, it's over two times faster than 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 summit is. Of course, the system is not there yet, and uh, and uh, uh, it will enroll on the November uh, twenty one top five hundred list, uh, and which time there will be. There will be new installations, so uh, it's unlikely that Lumi will be the number one system in the world. But nonetheless, I am I'm, uh, I'm confident that this will be at least in the in the among the, of the five five fastest systems. Not even uh, perhaps not even uh, perhaps even in the in the top three. But I, so what what does uh, 550 petaflop uh, mean? Uh, well, uh, we can do as as an some some like a rough comparison so it's, it's that it's a computing power equivalent uh, one and a half million uh, macbook pros uh, forming a tower of 20 something kilometers uh, of course the system won't do the job of of the uh, 1.5 million macbooks and then vice versa but just to give a given rough estimate how much uh, computing capability has there has been packed into this system and it's a quite a feat of engineering because the system will fit in a, in, a, in an area of an, on a tennis court and uh, with this kind of a bit less than three meter high uh, cabinets. But uh, what, what, it, what is important is, is that uh, it's going to be a an, an, uh, very modern, modern and powerful platform for high performance computing, artificial intelligence and data analytics and their convergence. And uh, more number wise uh, system specifications uh, the system uh, looks like this so the joint vision that we uh, started building this this concept back in the day when we uh, formed the consortium and then started uh, started building the Lumi story was was to, from the beginning it has been an idea that we want to build a GPU accelerated supercomputer that's that's meant for the convergence of uh, traditional simulation, uh, AI methods, meaning machine learning, and high performance data, data analytics. So somewhere in that, that uh, cross section, there will be a very fruitful area of, of scientific discovery. And of course, being a capable system for each of these, these domains alone. And uh, the system itself, like I said, so it's an, uh, the main thing is, is this, uh, GPU partition, which is the uh, 
which was this 550 petaflop partition of, of uh, based on the uh, AMD Instinct GPUs of the uh, next generation of, of AMD is the current one has been released the MI100 so the Lumi will have the next next generation of, of that after that called MI200. Uh, the system will also fe uh, feature an x86 so traditional CPU partition we call Lumi C which is kind of a like a meant to supplement workflows and that have been also a standalone uh, resource for, for codes that are not yet or are not uh, GPU enabled. So it's an uh, 10-ish petaflop of, of uh, AMD, AMD CPUs, again uh, AMD Milan CPUs. And, uh, and, and uh, we have also this kind of complementing computing resources we call uh, LumiD, the interactive usage uh, partition for uh, visualization, data analytics, meshing, pre, pre, post, pre, pre and post processing and so on. Well, whatever needs like a huge amount of, of uh, shared memory or, or graphical capabilities. And all of these capabilities are from uh, visible from the same very same uh, login environment and, and are seeing the same storage capabilities or uh, storage areas. So the, this and, and uh, sitting in the same high, uh, high speed interconnect for uh, possibility for combining different resources in a single workflow. And uh, the storage this is a three layer storage where we have an, uh, seven petabytes of, of flash for uh, IO, uh, uh, say, uh, IO challenge, uh, challenging uh, workflows uh, with a lot of reads or, or small reads or small uh, writes or needing an extreme bandwidth. So it provides two terabytes per second as an uh, uh, bandwidth and uh, it's just uh, kind of a, for less IO sensitive work workflows we have an, a more traditional uh, cluster parallel file system of 80, 80 petabytes in size and uh, also for for long longer term storing uh, data sharing to the outside world staging in data from outside world uh, we are running an object storage service uh, in, in the system uh, of uh, 30 petabytes in size. Uh, also, we run an uh, cloud uh, resources for uh, you know, running microservices and then uh, uh, helping on the, on the workflows. And uh, we are looking at uh, this is not the end of the story. So it's, it's be an, uh, like a, one installation by, by HP, but at the same time with the same brand and same, same uh, uh, operational umbrella we are thinking of, of adding some emerging tech uh, technologies and experiment, more experimental uh, resources on the system and then lumiq here is this for, obviously for quantum computing that we are looking at but also other, other experimental or <clears throat> more uh, like a emerging technologies may may uh, show up as a small uh, proof of concept resource to the to, to Lumi on, during the course of work. And the uh, Lumi timeline looks uh, such that uh, the uh, procurement was, was uh, done uh, in, uh, during um, well, <laughs> during the COVID time, so, so starting in November and then uh, completing in, in August. Uh, and with the outcome, as I just uh, announced, uh, the data center will be ready for uh, uh, ready for taking in the system uh, very soon. So it's it's, it's there. Uh, it looks looks like this, like a snowbank, Lumi Lumi meaning snow in the Finnish language. So it's it's this uh, it's a building within the uh, hall of the of the of the industry of the paper machine hole um, and uh, it's ready to take the system and, uh, and uh, we're going to start the physical installations of the system in, in March so trucks coming in from uh, to, to Kayani in, in March and uh, we hope to uh, open up the uh, uh, system for pilot usage in the summer time frame and, and uh, let, let the users uh, like a, uh, have a general availability a bit after that, so after the piloting period. 
And the system will be in, in uh, full glory at the end of this year, 21. And um, so the first phase uh, is uh, covering everything besides the GPU partition, and the GPU partition will be installed just that the system, system is in, in, in a full high. In this November uh, 21, the 500 list, and uh, becomes generally available at the end of this year. Um, at the, so the specs are hardware-wise, I think we are able to reach a very impressive uh, system and, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm confident it is an, uh, it is going to be a very powerful uh, modern tool for, for the European researchers for, for many years. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it is just a, a, a pile of, of uh, impressive hardware. And of course, we need to uh, complement it with, with a rich software environment, as well as also service uh, portfolio for the, for, the, for the researchers to um, make the uh, best out of the system. And for instance, we are, we are and uh, like I said, we are unlikely to hit the number one position in the top 520 uh, end lists, but where we want to be the number one in the world is this user experience. And uh, the, some ideas or some, some examples that we are looking at the moment are, are providing interfaces, not only the traditional command line interface, but also high level interfaces like Jupyter Notebooks, R Studios, uh, and, and so on. And, uh, also, the software budget has uh, for ISV codes have we have been uh, uh, left left nice nice amount of money for providing a rich stack of free install of software, and also we are looking at concepts like the data sets as a service. So in, in addition to the uh, pre installed software and databases, we are also looking at uh, having a lot of reference data sets created and, and readily available. And uh, one uh, important factor towards the user experience is, is an uh, user support team. Uh, so there will be one uh, help desk function for uh, all kind of questions, ranging from from uh, kind of a, like a short ones to uh, like a more uh, like a intensive deep support uh, cases. We hope to find uh, and, and, and answer for all of these such that the users can or the researchers can do researches uh, research and uh, we are we are here to uh, remove all, all bottlenecks and uh idea is that the, the all countries will have an uh, uh will have their own lumi experts but uh this will work as, as a uh, closely collaborating team uh like a as if it would, uh, everybody would be based in Finland. But we think this distributed model is, is uh, allows us to spread competencies to the to the consulting countries and, and at the same time harness competencies from the consulting countries for the good of, of everybody. And uh, so, Lumi, Lumi uh, user support team is mostly uh, it's, it's going to uh, maintain the software portfolio, provide training, user documentation, answer this kind of uh, like a uh, um, I would say like a level, what we call level two questions. So this kind of like an immediate uh, showstoppers and uh, for this kind of a more in, uh, like a longer term uh, support cases like uh, writing or rewriting a code or CPU code on the GPUs is something that we uh, are going to cl closely collaborate with the Euro SPC competence centers in these countries or in these Lumi countries as well as local uh, resources and competencies. Okay, uh, the uh, next few few uh, slides that I had had in mind was to, was to some ideas on how to pre get uh, prepared for the for the system, and it's just like a brief uh, recap on the on the uh, capacities. So, uh, what, what are the kind of uh, like assets? So, what, what are the uh, resources that, that are there for for your for your use cases? Uh, is well, of course, starting from the extreme computing cap capacity. So, we are really having a powerful uh system and uh um but what but at the same time uh with an idea that is not only this kind of a, like a hero run uh science so we are it's not only for tier zero applications where you harness the full system for something so it will support uh 
uh, like a runs up to the 50% of the system size. So uh, like a truly this kind of a very uh, cutting edge uh, uh, big simulations. But at the same time, we will be supporting uh, smaller workflows, uh, even to single GPU, uh, single CPU core style, uh, style uh, workflows. So we try to be, it tries to be this kind of a Swiss army knife where I can pull up some kind of a, like a knife or cost proof for, for all pro problems that there are in the 2020 uh, scientific computing in, in Europe. So there's the interactive usage for, for uh, large scale visualizations, data analysis, and so on. That, that was the LUMID. Uh, the scientific software stack uh, will be an asset of its own, of course, combined with the, with the uh, resources. Uh, the data management capabilities with, with the uh, LUMIO and, and the, the object storage service and the, and the uh, cloud service is something that we uh, are really interested in, in, in offering. So enables you to share your data sets that you want to share to the outside world and at the same time enable to build up uh, complex pipelines from uh, uh, hooking up uh, experimental instruments into the uh, into the uh, workflow of uh, where some computation is done and then on Lumi and then return some, somewhere else. <clears throat> and um, so how do I get access? Let's start from here. Uh, so, so the Lumi resources are allocated in terms of GPU hours, CPU hours and storage hours and you need to define your project in, 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 an, uh, in terms of these. And uh, so there's no dedicated hard for hardware for any of the countries. So if you have a U Lumi access, you can use the whole system with the, within the patch shop uh, policies. And uh, all countries will reserve a uh, share of the pools by, the, by their contribution to the total cost of ownership. So that was the 7.7% uh, for, for Belgium. And uh, it is uh, up to the Belgian considerations on, on how to uh, how these projects are allocated, and this will be addressed uh, later on. And uh, there will be different kind of projects allocated to the system. So they will be uh, starting from this kind of like a extreme scale projects, so <clears throat> corresponding to the uh, praise uh, tier zero, where we you have like a very very big pool of resources for running very big simulations. But at the same time, we uh, provide uh, general access, so small scale simulations as uh, a small scale usage because are not all good sciences. So the, 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 of course you can do it breaks, breakthrough stuff with, with this big, big simulations, but at the, at the same time, not uh, all excellent science are needing this. this. So we want to support scientific excellence uh, on, the, on the system, regardless of the, of the uh, uh, needed computational resources. And at the same time, there's, there's a possibility of getting development access, so just where the outcome is not uh, publications, but like new software, for instance. And then this kind of like a benchmarking or uh, preparatory projects where, um, where uh, like a, one can prepare for these large scale allocations. And uh, uh, minding that the uh, Belgian uh, researchers can apply either from the EuroHPC alloc uh, allocation via as a praise period review process or from the Belgium's own allocation, and that will be addressed uh, later on in this call. Uh, just uh, uh, flashing uh, some some uh, how do how do we think of the uh, bad job, job policies? So, like I said, uh, the default is is to uh, uh, you can run uh, jobs up to the fifty percent of the uh, either GPU partition or the or the CPU partition uh, with some complementary uh, uh, queues for for uh, back filling this short uh, high throughput style uh, jobs. Uh, or uh, long-running jobs. Also, batch interactive will be a possible uh, way of using. And with special arrangement, we can uh, uh, let let users to harness the full system on on a pre-designated times of the system. So we need to train the system, and then somebody can run uh, like a full full system runs. And these are subject to change change. So this is our initial thinking in the operational management board. Uh, but I, it's subject to change. But how do users feel like it, and how how do we observe the system be, be used? 
Uh, so the few words on, on how to prepare for Lumi. So, uh, well, first and foremost, uh, thinking projects, research projects, use cases, uh, what where we could bring value add for your research. So perhaps their zero grand challenge runs, or just like a, a smaller scale uh, uh, projects where combination of simulation science uh, and, and uh, machine learning within the very same workflow in a, in a very uh, seamless fashion is it can be the asset uh, for your research, for instance. Or some of these previously mentioned assets that I just uh, recapped a couple of slides ago. Uh, remembering Lumi will be a GPU system. So your codes need to be GPU codes. Uh, so, but at the same time, we are already 2021, 20, so it's not uh, esoteric uh, or hero programming anymore. But there's a, there's a big pool of, of GPU enabled community codes available. And so one way of preparing to this system is, is to just like a see whether your software suit is already GPU, GPU enabled. And if not, you can say if there's a competing package that can do, do the same and but is GPU en en enabled. Or uh, biting the bullet and, and uh, making, starting making the effort for GPU enabling the code. And uh, perhaps only the part of the GPU, uh, the whole workflow needs to be GPU en enabled and the rest of them can run on the Lumis uh, CPU nodes at the same time. And of course, if you're developing an application and you want to uh, harness Lumi to this full power, uh, perhaps it's a real time of, of uh, uh, fixing it, even if it works. And uh, the programming environment on Lumi will be based on the on the uh, AMD's Radeon Open Compute stack that provides an usual set of the uh, scientific libraries, machine learning frameworks, and libraries and uh, optimizing compilers for the, for the GPUs. And it's, it's an, uh, nicely, it's an open source stack. You, everybody can, can follow the development of the, of the Rockum. Uh, but uh, what makes me confident on the, on the uh, programming environment maturity is that it, it, uh, it is fully integrated to the uh, uh, very proven Cray programming environment. So if anybody has ever used an uh, Cray XC system, uh, back in the day, it's, it's going to be very familiar looking uh, computing environment uh, with the Cray compilers, uh, libraries, uh, the analysis tools, debuggers, and so on. And also, the, the uh, Cray's own stack has a uh, plugin for, for scaling up the uh, machine learning workflows in an, uh, into a multi node fashion. And um, just uh, some, some uh, ideas for people who are working with their own applications is, is then um, uh, remembering that the in Lumi the CPU and GPU nodes are working seamlessly together so meaning perhaps only one part of the application needs to be GPU enabled and then the less computationally intensive can be left to be and CPU applications in this kind of MB, MD style uh, fashion and in, in general it's just like a good idea of, of uh, making Refactorization and modernization of the of the code. We are entering the exascale area that is, is and uh, just just GPU based uh, systems coming up to the flagship systems. Uh, of course, you don't have to write everything on, on the lowest level. There are a lot of modern frameworks and libraries you can uh, build most of the capabilities uh, readily available, both domain specific and uh, uh, like a general ones. Uh, also, if you are uh, like a working on a uh, new project, it is important to start and uh, parallel code and GPU accelerate it and not perhaps vice versa. And what comes to the uh, programming models, uh, how one can prepare is, is that uh, the supported programming or the best uh, program models for, for the AMD uh, GPUs are called uh, the <coughs> HIP HIP. Which is AMD's essentially AMD's uh, re-implementation of CUDA. So, at the simplest, uh, CUDA to HIP conversion is a search and replace. So, this is, is a very similar looking like API, and there's even automatized tools for doing this conversion. And uh, if your code is already open ACC conver uh, uh, con open ACC GPU code, uh, we 
will support OpenACC to your some limit, but we, at the same time we recommend of, of uh, programming OpenMP5 as the directive-based uh, GPU uh, approach. And uh, uh, converting the OpenACC code on the OpenMP uh, can be done already now, or you can work on a, still on OpenACC and, and uh, just like a di dismantle OpenACC kernels into the more explicit constructs, and then this will be more or less uh, trivial or at least straightforward to uh, move it to OpenMP file. And uh, Lumi, the first phase in the summer will come with an uh, MI100 placed uh, GPU cluster for people doing this porting uh, work. And uh, uh, there are resources, uh, for instance, well, any, 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 uh, any, any uh, NVIDIA based uh, GPU cluster can be installed with, with this uh, HIP uh, framework for testing out how much work there is, is, is for, for uh, from a good record to move on to uh, HIP. Yeah, and of course we are, we are happy to uh, answer any, any further questions if, if they are uh, on, on these this technical topics. So let me conclude uh, by, by uh, not, no, noticing that uh, this, uh, we are enrolling in, in Europe, we are really catching up uh, the rest of the world, so US, China, Japan, in, in the, what comes to the uh, high performance computing and, and, and artificial intelligence capabilities. So basically there's an unprecedented amount of computational resources and capabilities available for uh, European uh, researchers, researchers and research and innovation. Uh, there's, there's, an, uh, there's a lot of competence building and user support activities ar around the uh, Euro HPC uh, umbrella and uh, they, they are synergistic and up-to-date with, with uh, national data infrastructures in many of the Lumi countries. And uh, uh, I was here walking through you to, to the Lumi uh, that I refer to as the Queen of the North. It's going to be the leadership class uh, supercomputer uh, designed for a broad spectrum of, of uh, user communities, uh, workflows, programs, and an enhanced user experience. Uh, we then remark that it's going to be a GPU-based system, which uh, indicates some preparatory work. But at the same time, it's a, it's a robust production system, not experimental, esoteric in, in any, any manner. And uh, for getting uh, prepared for this, it's, it's a good time for start, start the preparations already now. So uh, you need, may need to do some modernization work of, of an applications. It's, it's not trivial, uh, needs effort, but it definitely will, will pay off. And uh, for um, further information for, about Lumi, uh, please visit the Lumi supercomputer.eu uh, site. We are following up the uh, installations and then uh, providing content, uh, blog posts and, and uh, things like this over there. Or uh, take, take our Twitter account in the following or connect us in, in LinkedIn. And if in any case, if you have any, any uh, want to contact me directly, here's my email address and the phone number for, for any, any, any contacts. And uh, I think I have some time for answer questions if, if needed. So many thanks for joining the seminar and, uh, and uh, uh, very much looking forward to you to assess the users of the Lumi supercomputer. Thank you. Thank you.